Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square. Welcome to our live webinar today on October the 17th of 2021. If you are brand new to watching us, I implore you to go to our website of squareinasquare.com and sign up with your email so that you can go back in and watch all of our previous webinars that we have done this year. Of course, we started in January with our webinars and we are continuing on with them. So that way you won't miss a single thing and you'll get caught up. Now, what we are doing today is we are going to be working on our diamond options, which is option 28 and 29. Both of these diamond options I love to pieces. Now, if you're brand new, like I said a few minutes ago, you're saying options, option 28, 29, what are you talking about? I'm already lost. The different options are the different triangle units that you get and that you need to make any quilt pattern that you desire. So the system helps give you speed and accuracy and it helps improve on the human element. And we have uh, 40 options. So each option is a different triangle unit. And some of those options start out with a square in the middle with strips on the side. This is how we start everything. <laughs> and uh, the diamond options, little camera mishap here, and the diamond options start out with a diamond in the middle. So options one through 17 start out with the square, and options 18 to 39 start out just like this with a diamond. And you can see how we have the unit in the center, and then we just have these surround strips that we sew around. And then the different ways you trim them up, you get all these beautiful triangle units. Let's look at the quilts that I have behind me. So this one over here is called Grizzly Mountain. And let's get the camera to catch up with me here. I'm keeping him hopping today, Mr. Steve. Okay, so this one over here is called Grizzly Mountain, and this one uses flying geese and half square triangles. Now our flying geese, are what we call option three, and they start out with the square, just like this, and our half square triangles are what we call option four, and they start out just like this too, because anything that is that 45 degree angle or the 90 degree angle starts out with a square. Now this one here behind me, this one is an option nine, and we're gonna talk about option nine today because it has a lot of characteristics and a lot of things in common with our option 29 that's gonna start out with a diamond. And this one right here is a beautiful quilt that uses the option 29 that we're going to work on. And then this one over here, so we're gonna move the camera one more time, right around over here, this one is Star Jingle. And if you go back to our webinar, webinars for April and May, you'll see a little bit of the process of the Star Jingle quilt. Now this one is made totally from scraps, so all those little trim offs that you get when we go in and trim these up, I just pop them over into another quilt. Now Star Jingle is going to be one of the quilts that we teach in depth during our Quilt Club Week. And I'm gonna tell you more about Quilt Club Week when we get to the end of our teaching today. So. On August the 1st was when we did a core webinar. We talked about the core units that start out with the square, and we talked about the core units that start out with a diamond. And then we started in with our diamond options, and we're moving up today to option 28 and 29. So if you're brand new today, we have been building up to this point. So go back and watch some of those other ones and get some of those little other puzzle pieces filled in. Also remember that we have, um, you can comment here on the, the class today, ask, ask questions, that's how you learn, and nothing is silly or, or too beginner or any of that. You can also email us at jody at squareinasquare.com. And if you have some tech issues uh, or help that you need on finding a webinar or finding whatever, then email steve at squareinasquare.com, okay? So let's get started on our teaching. Now that you know a little bit about what we're doing and uh, seeing some beautiful quilts to get motivated with. So let's look down here at our table and I'm going to start with the, the square and do just a little preliminary with it and then move into our diamond shapes that we're going to be working on today because they all build on each other and they all work together. So this is the original ruler here 
and I'm going to go to this, the right side of the ruler where the 90 is. And if I want to make flying geese, then I'm just going to push that 90 up into that corner. And you can see how I get that perfect fourth of an inch from that point to the edge of the ruler. I have this grid line that shoots right through that corner. And I have black lines that line up with the seam, just like that. Hand flat, make a trim. Now, if I continue that on all four sides, I'm going to have an option one. Uh, which is a square in a square, but I'm working on flying geese right at the moment. So I'm going to go to the opposite side and I'm going to repeat that with the 90 right in the tip. And I'm going to look over here to make sure that where I've already cut that my fabric block underneath is staying square. I don't want it to get all wonky on me. So I left the fourth of an inch here and here. And now I'm going to go right up to the tip here and here on the other two sides. And we call that the two-step because I'm going to put the 90 right in the corner just like I have on the other two. But I'm going to step it over one, two, two lines just over on the side of the 90, right in the tip, right down the seam, go back to the tip, and a new grid line shoots right through that other corner. I also check to make sure I'm staying as square as possible on the other two sides. And this is a repeat of the two-step. Just step it over, trim it. Okay, now where I did the two-step, that's where I would cut through here and I would get my two perfect flying geese. Now I'm gonna leave it like that for just a moment and I'm gonna show you two flying geese here, just like this. So you can see how I left the fourth of an inch on two opposite sides, two-step the other two, I cut through here and I get my two perfect flying geese, all square, smooth, flat, perfect points, and my fabric goes right down into the corner where it's supposed to be. So when I sew a fourth and a fourth, my point is right there exactly on that line of fabric so that I get my nice sharp point when I sew it back into my quilt. Now I'm showing you flying geese because this is an important trim for this quilt right here which is option 29, and it's kind of the beginning and the core of the What's system. Make sure you go back to What's that August the 1st and uh, watch that webinar. What's the name of that? This one right here is called Pathway to the Stars, this beautiful quilt here, and it is in our uh, diamond book. In fact, there's two quilts here. This one is called Poinsettia Star right here, and we're going to look at it here in a minute, and both of these are diamond quilts and they come from the diamond book. And you can see kind of a little bit of it here back on the corner. And after we show you how to make it, I'm gonna open it up so that you can see the corners because the border and the corners of this quilt are just amazing and we've used our option 29 to do so. So if you have your diamond book, we're gonna be on page 36 and 37 for option 28 and option 29. So let's jump in and do our option 28 first. So if we can look right here, let's just go ahead and look at the page. So what we're going to do for our option um, 28 is you can see how we start out with our diamond in the middle and we have our strips on the side. So it's going to look just like this, diamond in the middle, strips on the side. We're going to trim it up and then we're going to sew around it again. So you can see here how we're trimming it up. And you sew around it again and it's going to look like this and then you're going to sew around it again and then we're going to cut it like an x and you're going to get two different blocks look at this wonderful border here from one of them because they're going to be slightly different so you're going to get two here and here that look like one shape and two here and here that look like the other shape so look at this wonderful border, how easy it is to turn that mitered edge and go back down. And then here's the other shape in another border. I mean, just easy and wonderful and beautiful. And then here's the look of one block that you can get by putting them back together. And here is the look of the second block that you can get. So a lot of variety here with option uh, 28. So let's get started with our option 28 diamond. So when you go to your page, it's going to have your trimmings. Now, if you know the core of the system, which is options 1, 3, and 4, options 7, 18, 
19 and 20. That's all you need. That's all we're going to do to build this block. It's to build this option. So when you come to the page, you can either look for the trimming or you can go to the quick tip and see exactly what the trimmings are. So it says that my cutting sequence is an option seven. So I'm going to cut it like an option seven. I'm going to sew around it again and I'm going to cut like an option one and then I'm going to sew around it again and cut like an option one. So an option one means leave a fourth of an inch. So for this one, we're going to leave a fourth of an inch every time we trim. So that's going to be easy. So to do the diamond, I'm going to go to the other angles on my ruler. I'm going to use the 60 up here in the corner. And see how it, it, it just fits in there just like the 90 fit on the square. See the 60 goes right in the point, lines go right over the seam, grid line goes right through the point. I hope you see how it builds on each other and what you learn in one of the triangle units or options you're going to apply to another one. So you just keep building on what you know. So there's my fourth of an inch right there and I'm going to do this to the other one. So push my 60 up into the other corner. And when you go back to that August 1st one where we first started, we talk about more about how to cut our diamond and how to put our strips on to get to the basic diamond and that point. Now I want to leave a fourth of an inch. And option seven means that I leave that perfect fourth of an inch on all four corners. So when I go to my ruler, I have the 120 with a fourth and then I have a 120 with an eighth over here. So don't get those mixed up because you want that fourth of an inch. And of course, each time I push it into a corner, if I've already cut, I look to make sure that my block is staying square underneath. And these trim offs are what I was talking about in my star jingle quilt of how I go back in and use up these scraps. I always have a scrap quilt going so that I can use up my trimmings and use up my scraps. And um, on that quilt, I have used up so many scraps for the colored stars and for the, the light in there that it's amazing. Okay, so I leave the fourth of an inch on all four sides. So you can see how this is an option seven. And my trimming said option seven, option one, option one. So now let's move forward here. And let's look at my piece. I started out pretty large, so my pieces keep keep going. So let's look and see what we have so far. So we started out just like this with the basic diamond. I trimmed leaving my fourth of an inch on all four sides. Okay, so now we're going to sew around it again. So notice how I sew around it again. And on the short side of this diamond, you need a smaller width here and here. And on the long side of the diamond, when you sew around it, we need a wider piece here and here. And when you're following the patterns or you're looking at the charts, it will give you the sizes for what you need. So make sure that you um, check those charts out on the book. So my trimming directions here said option seven, so I did it. I've sewn around it again and it says option one. So my option one means I'm going to leave the fourth of an inch on all four corners. And now this is a 90 corner here. So I'm going to go to my, my 90 because a rectangle is like a square. It's a 90. So I'm going to put my 90 right in the corner there and I'm going to line my seams up and that's going to leave my fourth of an inch. And if you have the grande, you can use the grande on there. So see, these are pretty big. So I want to go back and use those. See how, um, look at this one right here. This is what I'm using for star jingle. So see how easy it is to go in and sew that on the side of my square? It doesn't have to be a rectangle. It can be one of these little funky shapes. As long as the size of the scrap is the correct ratio for the size of your square, it will work. So, you know, these are are great to go back in and use as trim offs. And I'm just going to keep trimming it. So I love having a scrap quilt going because as I get these little trim offs, I can stay so organized and my scrap bin will not get 
all crazy. And I don't, you know, one of the things we've, we've been doing this for over 30 years. So one of the things that obviously we've heard over the years is that, you know, oh, you use more fabric or what do you do with those little pieces? Well, I always say that they're only wasted if you don't go back in and use them again. And it's very easy to go back in and use them again. Now, because our piece is getting so big, I've switched over to the Grande. That was our original. And the Grande is just larger, and it will do this same trimming for you, plus a lot of other things. And I just love my, my Grande. So I've got it in there, leaving that fourth of an inch. So you can see how it gets square, even though... Think about this, we started with a diamond, we ended up with a rectangle, and now we're getting a square. Okay, so there's what it looks like. So we could leave it just like this if we wanted to. This is actually another option if we left it just like this. I think it's an option 21. So we're up to 28. So, so far we already did all of this with the option 21. But now we're going to go back and we're going to sew a strip on all four sides again. So you can see how it's getting quite large. So we have a strip on all four sides again. And my direction said 711. So we know we trimmed like a 7 and then we trimmed like a 1, leaving the fourth of an inch. So that means we're going to go back and trim like an option one again on all four corners. Definitely want to keep those big babies. And just trim leaving that fourth of an inch on all four sides. And this is option 28, the one I showed you with those great borders. Leaving that fourth of an inch on all four sides. Now, because we left the fourth of an inch on all four corners, I know I'm not going to cut through those corners. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick. Because my block is kind of big, I'm going to move it up so I can keep it straight and just make sure that I have that fourth of an inch off of my point. Okay, so here it is. We trimmed a seven, leaving a fourth of an inch. So when we go back in and sew around it again, we get our nice sharp points. We trimmed again, like an option one, and then we trimmed again, like an option one. So this is our block. So we could leave it all by itself just like this and use it in a um, quilt design. But to do the option 28, now you're going to cut it from this corner all the way down to this corner and from this corner all the way down to that corner. So let's see if my grande, my grande isn't quite big enough to make it all the way from corner to corner. All we need is the edge of a ruler. So I'm gonna grab a bigger one here. And I'm just going to put the edge of my ruler right at that tip. And I'm going to bring it down and put it right through this tip. Hand flat. You don't want to mess it up because all your work is done. Now the magic is going to happen. Okay, don't let it move. Once you start cutting, don't let it move. And I'm going to turn my mat instead of moving my fabric. So I'm going to turn my mat so I can get a good cut from this corner to this corner. So I love working with a smaller mat on top of maybe a bigger mat so that you can turn that. So see how it's going to go through this corner all the way down to that corner. And this is option 28. And when you get all your sewing done and all of your trimming and then you get it sliced and diced the way that you're supposed to, then this is where the magic happens, and I love this. I love it. So these two here are going to be the same. Let's pull them out. 
look at this cool shape that you get. So cool. And of course, these two are going to be the same. So let's look at a couple of things that we could do with this. So the, you could have something in the center and you can just turn these and look how you have this going on in the corner. So look how you can put something in the middle. Let me move my mat up a little bit so you can see better. So look how you can put something in the middle where there's another block. You can use the four blocks that you made, or you can take these two from this block and these two from another block, and then all four are the same. But just for quick purposes here, you can see how you can flip these and put these on the outside edge and then put something in the middle. And I love having these unique shapes in the corner and just how easy and cool it was to get them. Now if I'm going to keep these two together because they're the same and these two are the same. So let's get back square here. So look at this awesome, awesome border. Look at that. I love that. So you could use these for a block since these two are the same and you could use these two from the blocks for a border. Or you can put, I'm going to call it the A shape along the bottom and the B shape along the top and have your border using both of the different designs. And I want you to look at how easy it is to turn that mitered corner and head back down the other side. And look how, if you have the opposite one, look how those match up perfect to go and if you head it on down with your border, just like that. I love that, that is so cool. Now that we've talked about a border, you can see how you just option 28 is just an awesome one to have. But let's look at if we put four of these that are identical back together, and I don't have the other two to do it, but if you put four of them back together, you get this cool little shape here in the middle. See how those, there you can kind of see how you're going to get this, this kind of this, um, I don't know, what is it? Eight sides, an octagon shape here in the middle. And when we come back here to our book, that is this one right here. So maybe we can zoom in on it. So when you put four together, yeah, that's great. Look, you can see how you kind of get that circle shape in there with a little bit of color on the corners. Just a really cool block. Now when you put the other two shapes together, look how you get this, this nice four-pointed Star of David in the middle. I love that. So let's look at the fabric part of that one. So look how when you put these together, you can see that star taking shape. And of course, this section would go here too. You would put another one there and another one there. And I think this is just really cool. Now, um, usually when I have a seam here, I want to think about two different fabrics because a seam is work to give you creative design possibilities. So instead of doing red check and red check here, I would do two different red prints possibly to help give you another um, uh, shape or design. And of course, these two could go back in there. You'd have kind of a wonky star. There's some, some wonky stuff going on um, in quilt blocks in the quilt world. So just kind of changing them up like that, you get a different one. And I probably, if I was going to put these together like this, I would probably keep the color here the same as here so that you still have your white going on back there, here and here. And I suggest that when you get ready to play with this one and start building with it, that you can um, um, think about where you make a, a sample one and think about where you want the color and then draw it out or put sticky notes here on your sample so that when you go back to making your 
your uh, basic square for option 28, you know where you're at. So tons and tons and tons of different design opportunities with option uh, 28. I can't wait to see some pictures from you guys on the Facebook pages of what um, you're making. So Steve, do we have any questions or comments so far on 28? I don't see any. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do option 29. Okay. So now we're going to work on option 29. And option 29 is when you look at your trimmings and you look at your, you're only going to sew around it um, two times. But um, when you sew around it, uh, when you start, you have to make sure that you do an 18. So it starts out by doing an 18 and then you're just going to do a 1. So we need to trim an 18 so that you can see how to do it. And normally with an 18 you're going to cut it in half to get your two what we call Canadian geese. But since we're going to sew around it again, we don't want to cut it in half until we get more complete like this. And this here is our option 29. And let's just look at it Let's just look at it in the quilt first. So let's look at this block right here and let's look at an eight at this option 29, what you're going to get. May not be able to zoom very good uh, in the placement of this one. Okay, so this whole shape right here is an option 29. And you can see how it has three sides, so it's a triangle. And what we worked on over here with option 28. Of course, it has three sides and it's a triangle. But you're going to get every shape the same and you're going to get these long, thin triangles right here of triangle points. And of course, in your block, I want you to notice, let's just kind of separate this off. So here you can see the other one. See how it's exactly the same as this one? So you're going to put two of them together and then you're going to put two of them together and then you're going to sew that seam right there and you have your your whole star your pathway to the stars and this one is set together a little differently so notice how that the top row of stars they they don't like normally you have this corner matching to this corner and it's star star and they but notice how you have just a thin sashing in between and then when you put your rows together you have these that, that double up here in the corners and you get this pathway going through the star. And we're going to open this up so that you can see it. But let's get over here and trim. So the first thing we need to do is trim it like an 18. And what that means is that we're going to leave a, um, a fourth of an inch here and here at the top and bottom of the 60. And then on the sides we have to trim it differently because we're going to cut through there and we have to move our points and create a seam allowance. Remember when we did our flying geese with the square, remember how we did the two-step trim right up to the tip? So we're going to have to do a different trim on this one. We don't want to leave the fourth of an inch. And the magic amount of fabric that we want left off of that point is actually an eighth of an inch. So that's when you... Um, take your original ruler and go to the bottom of it, and that's where the 120 with an eighth is. And so trim it, 120 with an eighth. See, it just has an eighth of an inch of fabric, and that's the perfect amount to get your perfect point. You're still sewing a fourth of an inch, just like everything. But because this is a different angle, we have to have a different amount of fabric left off of that point so that you get your nice points in your uh, quilt. You don't want them blunted. Okay, now up here at the top and bottom, what do we do? We left the fourth of an inch, so that's going to be the 60. Just push it up in there, leave that fourth of an inch. And see, you guys thought diamonds and long skinny points had to be hard. Or maybe you even thought you had to paper piece that stuff, but not when you learn the square in a square. We're going to make everything easy for you. Okay, so here it is trimmed a fourth a fourth, an eighth an eighth. And if you were doing an 18, you would cut it in half. Or if you were doing your flying geese, you'd cut it in half.
but we don't want to cut it because we're going to sew around it again. So here you can see how we've sewn around it again. And when you look at your directions, it's going to say, trim it like an option one. Well, we've been trimming like an option one almost on everything today. So what that means is you're going to take your 90 and you're going to do a two-step. And I've got a lot of, I just took some scraps and put it on here. You can see how wide this one is. This one's a little bit thinner. I just picked up my scraps and used it. I'm going to go to my grande and I'm going to put my blue line right in the tip because it's going to help me cut this big one better. And that's going to be a fourth of an inch off of that corner. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. Trim like an option one. So that means all four corners are going to have the fourth of an inch. And I'm looking to make sure I'm staying square as I go around. And you can turn your mat when these get so big. It um, makes it a little easier just to turn your mat. In the square to square system, you do all of the human element, which is where you're going to, you know, make mistakes. That's your cutting, your sewing, your pressing. You're going to be doing all of that and then letting the ruler do the work for you. And whoops, I'm going to move up a little bit so that I can. And then you let the ruler do the work for you to get your blocks that are square and flat and smooth. And the way that we do the square to square system, all of your points are exactly where they need to be. Now, because we trimmed with an eighth of an inch here, this leaves a blunted area, which is good. This is what we want. You should have a fourth of an inch right in there. You should have a fourth of an inch opening. And what we're going to do for an option 29 is now we're just going to come in here and I'm putting the ruler on here tip to tip, but I'm also looking to make sure that I have a line I'm using a grid line right here on the tip. And you know, I think it should be an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna go back to the original ruler where the eighth of an inch is. And this is the 120 with an eighth edge. And I'm putting, because if it's a fourth of an inch opening, it's an eighth of an inch on each side of that point that you need. So I'm making sure with this eighth of an inch line on my ruler here with my 120, that I'm getting this right through that corner so that I will have a nice uh, sharp. Now my ruler is not long enough to cover. You can put any ruler up next to it and then scoot this one over and walk to the other side of your table or swing it around. That's another reason why I love a mat that I can move. And then I can come in here and trim this one. So where you did um, the eighth of an inch trim, remember we were cutting these in half here with that eighth of an inch trim, and here you can see how we've gone and cut them in half, but we sewed around it one more time. Now I did different colors everywhere because I want you to look at the star here. Notice how normally when you would look at this block, let's look at how the traditional world looks at this block. So here they see half square triangles, which is our option four. And here um, is what you might know as a peaky and spike, but we call it Canadian geese. So you would have to make all three of these units separate and put them together in a row. And then of course that would repeat down here. And then in the middle, look and see what you have. You have your, um, Peaky and Spike, or your option 18, and then you have four triangles coming together in the middle. Now this unit right here, or four triangles, is our option 40. So you could do it with an 18 and a 40 and a half square triangle. But when you do it in the options that help move you to that same results faster and better, look how we get. So here, so here you can see the, the shape of the 
triangle going down in the nose. You can see the points. And then you can see these are different, different fabrics, but they're still background. And so you're gonna get the look of half square triangles. So look how that goes in there like that. And then you would have another one here and another one in here and then another one in here. So you definitely want different colors in those places so that you can get four different colors here with your half square triangles and then two different colors here for half square triangles. So let's look back over here on our table. So here you can see how you would put, um, and I, if you had your other, if you had another set made, then you would have different colors coming together. Because see, once again, if I have a seam here, I want the design, I want to be able to use two different colors because I went to the work to have a seam here, so I don't want these to be the same. So you would have to have another set with different colors. See how these show up here, and they're the same here and you want those to be different colors. But these could work like this, and then you have a different set in here and a different set in there. So you would put two together and you would sew this seam, and then you would repeat two together, and that would be your section here, and sew your long seam together. And then you're going to have your star over here, your pathway to your star. Use the sashing and make your rows same thing with the other row and the only difference because see the sashing is the same here it goes up this way and your sashing goes here into this middle section just like this one goes to the middle section so um, you don't have to have a pattern for this you could say I'm going to start out with a four inch diamond go to your book or three inch diamond let's say you've got some leftover strips for something and they're three inches or whatever go to your option 29 and this first one says um, cut size of your diamond so it goes all the way up to a four inch diamond so you could come in here and choose any size of diamond you want and then just move across horizontally and it's going to tell you what size of um, strips to cut for the first time you go around and what size of strips you cut for the second time that you go around then you can put them together and say, oh, okay, now that's my block. And then after you have your block, you measure this section, and that's what your sashing is. So right there, that's how you're gonna make this quilt. You don't, you don't necessarily need a pattern for it. You can just start in with your scraps, and start in with your charts, and just take off. Just take off and start going and see where you come out. Be adventuresome. Now, just like we, anytime you have a triangle unit, look how you can do, board, uh, do a border. So see how I always say nose up, nose down, nose up, nose down, nose up, nose down. So that's how you're gonna put them together to be a border on the side. And when you turn that corner, you're just gonna put another one there and take off down the other side. Now for the border of this one, I was gonna show you what we did for the border here, and it's really, really pretty um, how we did it. So um, I'm gonna open it up here on the table so that you can see that border, and then I'm gonna hang it uh, up so that you can see how the way that we did the colors, it just looks so awesome. So I want you to see how we did um, one, option 29 here, and we just sewed it to this uh, border. And then we have an option 29 here, and we sewed it on so that it could be as a square for the corner. And I love this red popping in the very corner of the quilt. And then you can see the other one right here. So we put three together. So let's just kind of see what that looks like. So here's one. And here's two, and then the other one would go there, and that's three. So awesome, awesome border, and a lot of pretty stuff done with color. So let's hang this up here. Now before I put this one up, 
I want you to notice how this is the same one, but this is option nine with the square. So you can see those triangle shapes, but see how you have the regular 45, 90 angles here. And in this one, we're gonna have those long, thin triangle shapes go through. Let me come in time. Okay, so I'll let them look at that one for just a minute. And zoom in and I'll step out of the way. Okay, and now I'm going to put I'm going to take a minute to hang it so that you can see the corners. So now you see the whole quilt. So here is the quilt. So look at the blocks and how they see whatever size this was. We put a block in the corner that same size and made that row. And then on the next row, we just had to do sashing, that little width of sashing everywhere to make those line up. And notice how these corners are just a little bit darker than the actual background of the, of the diamond. Notice how the diamond and the sashing are the same and a little bit lighter and that makes this kind of a dark light go through there and you can see that pathway and it creates another design going throughout your quilt so I just really love this it's just really a beautiful quilt and one of my favorites and then you can see how we've used the option nine in the corners now I also want you to notice that you don't have to piece the whole border you can just do something nice in the corner and it will make your quilt look special and like you took that extra step to do the border and not just sewing strips on and calling it a border and getting it done. So do something in the corner. All of these options are great options to use in the border and to use in the corners to make your quilt just over the top wonderful. And I think, I think you're really enjoying this and, and really liking um, the quilt. So let's look, do we have any questions before uh, yeah. we move on? Do we? We do. Okay, got some questions. Let's go back to option 28. Okay, let me see where my pieces are for 28. Well, okay. Well, it's, it's a question. So to make option 28, do you, you need to go to the measurements for the center square and strips from option 21, is that right? No, you have your own chart. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure, some of the options don't have charts, but I'm pretty sure. Um, okay. Yeah, so go to, yes, you're correct. Go back to, I didn't check the charts. Yeah, go back to option 21, because it's the same. Option 21, mm -hmm. and use those measurements for the center and the strips. Correct, mm -hmm. okay. yes. Good, paying attention, good. All right. Is isn't the Canadian geese a rectangle? If so, can you combine it with a square in a block? Yes, the Canadian geese are a rectangle. And when you go to your diamond book at the very beginning where we talk about um, those star blocks, so let's, uh, I always forget the page. On page 72, that's where we go into detail about building your stars because this is a rectangle, not a square. And um, so whatever size this one is here, then obviously that's what this is and this and this. So your square here would be the same size as this. And then this one here, this one matches up to this one. So your square would be the size of this. And when you go into your... Um, your um, star blocks so you've got over 200 here you can see how that's what we're making um, are these coming together for them to make your star 
and your centers are different than what your corners are. And when you look over here, let's zoom in on these and let's look at um, one thing that your diamond book does is it takes your stars and then it shows you, look how this one has the points going out and then the next one has the points going in. So instead of the eight points here, you're getting four points and you're getting that Star of David look. And then it shows you what happens instead of a center square, you put an option one in the middle, or you put a four patch, or you put a half square triangle pinwheel. And they all show you points out, points in. And then down in the next row, it shows you those same combinations, but now we're gonna put half square triangles in the corner. And then in this one, it shows you the same combinations, but now we're gonna use four patches in the corner. And when you look at this block and this block, they're the same. The only difference is, is instead of points going out, points are going in. So let's, let me see if I can find two more kind of in that same color sequence. Maybe we can do this one here with the black. So the diamond book has tons of information in it for you. So let's look here. So here we go with points going out. So see, look, that's what it looks like, points going out. And that's what your book shows you, points going out. Beautiful, a great contrast, that black star is just exquisite. Now all we're gonna do is flip them to where points go in. And there you go, just that easy. Put anything in the corners, anything in the center. You, so we start with a two inch star back pages earlier and work our way up to the, the bigger ones. And then your page 72 gives you information on building your blocks and about the different sizes of corners and about how your corners are a different size than your center. And then it gives you all your combinations. So hopefully that helped. And in this one right here, um, this one, the point set a star, uh, same thing. Notice how uh, points go out. Let me bring it over a little bit so you can see it better. There we go. So notice how your points are going out, just like here on this one. Notice how we put half square triangles in the center here. And then this, this right here is an option 11. And we're going to get all four of those out of one block, just like you've seen me start with the center, sew around it, trim it, sew around it, trim it. We're going to get all of these out of one square. And then we just have uh, flying geese right here. So this one is called Poinsettia Star. This is also a kit on our website. Beautiful quilt, beautiful, exquisite quilting on it. And you, you, you've trained yourself to look at a block like this or to look at a quilt and say, you know, I don't have the skill to make it or I don't have the time to make it. But using our system and the tools, you can make exquisite blocks like this, very intricate and beautiful, and you don't have to go to the hassle and the headache. Normally I would say that a quilt like that, if someone did decide to tackle that, like the poinsettia star, they would start it, put it in a box, it goes under the bed, stacked up in a closet, and it's one of those unfinished projects, a whip, a work in progress. And, um, you know, it, it stays there and it doesn't come back out because you feel defeated because things aren't going together right. You're going to have to rip something out. But with the square and a square system, it's just it's just a breeze. All right, I think we got some questions. In the quilt with the star, so it may be halfway. Okay, so I'm going uh, You planned for the diamond and sashings as the same? Yes. Mm -hmm. So look how this is the diamond in the middle here and see how it is the same fabric or same color value as the sashing and those background corner squares. And then I also used it as my first border up here. I'm kind of jumping ahead of you here. I used it as my first border here because I wanted it to, I wanted the quilt to push into the, the that star like we had taken part of it off or like this section was laying on top of the star. So the, the same color value or the same fabric, the lightest, is that first border. It's your diamond. It's your um, sashing. And of course, those are the same up here in that little star. Okay. I think that might be it. Let me look. 
If you have any more, we're going to wrap it up here in a minute. So if you have any more questions, get them in. I really have enjoyed teaching these to you today, 28 and 29. They're just option, just wonderful options, great shapes. There's so much you can do with them. So um, Steve says no more questions. So um, then uh, we'll do a little bit of newsletter info, and then I'm going to step over here to this quilt to give you a little info about it too. Um, the next two Sundays, we will not have our Sunday webinars. And um, the next... Um, the next, um, I'll teach the live class tomorrow for our Love of Country that the Premium Club is doing. And then the next two in uh, Premium Club on Monday will be pre-recorded ones for Love of Country because we'll be gone to um, the Houston uh, Quilt Festival. So it looks like we're on a boat today with our, our cameras. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to tell you guys that are brand new, I'm going to tell you about our Premium Club. So you heard me mention that on Mondays we have our Premium Club classes and uh, some of them are live and some of them are pre-recorded. And each fall and like say from um, August to December and we have one project that we do and then January to May we have another project then we do and then we have tons of stuff that goes on in between. And that is called our Square and a Square Premium Club. It is a subscription, it's a, it's a paid area that you go to, and we also have the Square in a Square Premium Club Facebook page where people who want to can join in and see what others are doing and ask questions and so on. It's really a great group, it's very active, and I'm very proud of all of the students in there. You can see how much they're learning and how much fun they're having. And that is our Square in a Square Premium Club. Now you can go to our website, squareinasquare.com, and you can go in and watch a little recording and see more information about our premium club. So just go to squareinasquare.com and you can sign up. You know, we need to keep learning and we need to, if we love sewing, we need to keep improving on our sewing skills. And I love to see the progress that the students have in the premium club because I can tell that they're watching the classes and learning. We also need to have things that we look forward to, even if you're not making the projects we're making. Uh, and you can use our kits or you can use from your stash. I love seeing all the different color combos that people put together for their project and everyone working along on the same blocks and the same quilt and to see all the different color values. But we need to have something that we look forward to. We need to have a group of friends that enjoy the same thing that we do. And we have people from all over the earth. We have Germany and Norway and South Africa and Australia and Spain and Italy and I think every state in the United States but we have lots of different people in the club and it's fun to be able to have friends from across the way and see what others are doing and and just you know make those friendships and those connections and you can do that with the premium club and at the same time keep motivated keep your mind learning and have a great time now with the Premium Club, you can sew anytime you want, 24-7. So it doesn't matter if you're up in the middle of the night, you can go to the website and click on and watch a class. And you can learn something, even if you don't make the quilt. And who knows, somebody else may be up at the same time watching with you. But 24-7 you have access to hundreds of hours of videos. You get to sew in the comfort of your own sewing room with your own equipment and your own supplies and you can wear your jammies all day long and your bunny house shoes and nobody knows and it doesn't matter because you're up there having fun and learning. And we're adding new things all the time, some pre-recorded and some lives. And we, since we are going to Houston in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a face-to-face dinner and uh, with premium club members where you can actually meet them in person if you want uh, and we we'll also have a special part of our booth we have two booths dedicated to premium club you can find us in the 1100 aisle if you are coming to Houston um, we've got lots of different numbers but I think 1132 is a number I remember because we have like six different booths and um, we're just kind of off of the main aisle and right there on 1100 so if you're coming to Houston we want to see you there and meet you and answer your questions and get a demo and see all of the quilts and the, and the different fabrics that we have. But I really encourage you to join the Premium Club. Now the other thing that we have is what we call Quilt Club Week. And once a year we dedicate, um, you, uh, we call it a week, but it's four dedicated days. We have some preview days and then some 
some day some things going on after it's it's over but you know have you ever had the excitement of going to a quilt show and all the different things that you're going to to learn and and see and get to watch and and participate in so it's it's kind of like that quilt club week is like that we have stuff all day long we have pre-recorded stuff we have live stuff we have um, all different types of lectures and demos and classes going on and a variety of things, not just square and square, but a variety of things. And this Quilt Club Week is actually a celebration for our Premium Club. So Premium Club members are already uh, joined. They get to go in there and watch. But for those of you that don't do Premium Club, you can go in and do just Quilt Club. And we have a special going on right now. If you go to the website, Click on there with your email and go in and find out about Premium Club and Quilt Club Week. But what's happening with Quilt Club Week is right now today, you can start and you can start watching over and over again as much as you want. And um, does it go to the end of February, Steve? Mm -hmm. if, the, if you go in now, all of those things that we had for Quilt Club Week 2020 are in there for you to enjoy now to the end of February. And then... December 1 through 4, we're going to have our new Quilt Club Week, and um, it will, um, you'll be able to have access to it to the end of February also. So go in and join Quilt Club Week. You don't have to wait. Start watching the 2020 that we did last year and learning all the different things, and you'll be ready and pumped up for our December 1 through 4 Quilt Club Week for 2021. And if you have any questions, you can just send us an email, steve at squareandasquare.com. It's, it's so exciting. The, the, the people who participated in it last year were just like, oh my gosh, I can't take it all in. One lady told me that her, uh, she cooked meals and put them, um, put them up so that during Quilt Club Week she wouldn't have to stop and cook a meal. Because it would be like, think about it, if you were going to a quilt show, you wouldn't be there to cook a meal. But the thing about this is you don't have to get on an airplane. You don't have to be with other people if you don't want to face to face, but you still get to be with them having the fun. You can participate in the lectures and see the classes. And the other thing that I love about Quilt Club Week is you can see what we're doing and then you can decide if you want to do it. So say like you were going to a quilt um, uh, class, you would have this big supply list of things that you would need to buy or purchase to take the class and you don't even know if you're going to love it but with quilt club week you get to participate in it and then decide oh i would like to do this so okay i'm going to buy the supplies or nope that's not for me i really enjo enjoyed watching it i loved watching it but i don't i don't want to do it so i don't have to buy the supplies that's probably the thing that we hear at the live events the things that you hear about a live event is is that i had to buy these supplies and i'm never going to make this project or uh, by the time I spent all my money on travel and hotels and class fees, I had no money left to purchase fabric and patterns and fun things. Or I had to sew on, on a machine that was provided for me in class, and I spent the whole class trying to learn the machine instead of actually working on the project. And with Quilt Club Week and Premium Club, you get to work in the comfort of your own sewing room with your own supplies that you feel very comfortable with. And you know what? Sometimes we plan ahead for that special event, and we go, but during that class, you just didn't quite feel good. And when class is over, it's over. But with Quilt Club Week and Premium Club, you can go back in and watch it over and over again. And your teacher is still here to help you. We answer emails and help uh, students with projects all the time. It's not like we flew in, did the class, and then flew home, and you never see your teacher again. You're there. We're there for you so that when you are ready to finish that project and work on something, we can be right there to help. And that reminds me, we have a quilt hotline, a text, and it's 817-713-2879. And if you have a quilting question or you wanna send a picture to me or you're working on something and you're just like, ah, I wish my teacher was here to see it, send me a picture of it and I can help you with that. I love doing that. And I love seeing those light bulbs and all of that learning going on with each and every student. So do we have a question, Steve? Uh, yes, we have a couple questions. Okay, some questions came in. Great. Okay. Um, I love questions. Cutting left-handed. Doesn't matter. 
Doesn't matter, just turn the ruler if you're left-handed, cut with your left. Turn the ruler if you're right, cut with the right. I have a daughter-in-law left-handed, so I, cert I have a sister left-handed. I have a nephew left-handed, so I certainly understand it. Well, Amber was valedictorian of her. My daughter-in-law, Amber, when we had our teacher certification, <laughs> she was a valedictorian of her class. <laughs> As a left-hander. As yeah. a lefty. All right, so it's the same. It's the same, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, doing the corners of the mm -hmm. quilt. Yes. Can you explain again how to do the corners? How to do the corners. Okay, let's come back over here at our work table for just a minute. Okay. Okay, so let's look up here. So you'd make your pieces and of course your appropriate size and everything. And you can see how this one goes on that strip. So you're just gonna sew it across on this strip. And of course this one goes on the other end. And so that becomes one long solid piece because this, this squares it up on each end, okay? Then this one, you're going to put a strip or a triangle on the side to make a square. So you're gonna put a triangle on the side there and it makes this square. And then that square can either be sewn on the end of your top row or that square can be sewn on your side rows. Just that, just that easy. Okay. And of course your pattern, this one is a pattern in the diamond book. So it's gonna give you all of your dimensions and pictures and stuff to help you get it done. Another question? Uh, I don't think so, I think we're good. Uh, just wondered about uh, yearly membership or whatever in Premium Club. Yes, in and Premium said, Club- I you said we had there's monthly, a, yearly, and lifetime. Yes, yes. And uh, we've got several people, quite a few people that have actually joined the lifetime membership. And uh, you know, of course that is the best value. Uh, premium club for a year is is the next best value. Oh, and also when you sign up for premium club, if you don't have any books and rulers, then you know whatever it is, you have a, a limited window of time there to where you can purchase your books and rulers for a pretty nice discount with the yearly or with the lifetime. And so that's awesome to be able to get um, a deeper discount with your books and rulers for starting. So, and um, there's all that information right there when they go into the website and look about their yeah, discounts. Yeah, at the very top of the squareandsquare.com. Go to squareandsquare.com. At the very top is your click. It says click. premium club and uh, quilt club, club week. week. And, and then, then you click on it and go that in. It explains both of them. And then there's descriptions all throughout. Yeah, so there's a video that explains both. And then there's words that give you all the different choices that you have. And of course, ask questions and send us an email if there's something that you don't understand or you need help with. And this is a special dedicated website that you go to and you have access to it 24 seven for as long as your subscription is. And um, if you are a premium club, um, then Quilt Club Week will automatically be in there. You don't have to pay extra for it. You can buy just Quilt Club Week. Am I understanding that Jingle Star, which I love, is to be taught in the Quilt Club Week? Yes. And Let's, can I purchase just the Quilt Club Week at this time? Yes, you can go to the website and you can purchase Quilt Club Week right now. And you can start watching 2020, the Quilt Club Week that we had last year. And you can watch them as many times as you want. And that uh, special that we have goes to the end of February. Am I correct on that? So it starts immediately as soon as you sign up and it goes to the end of February. And it also includes the new one coming December 1 through 4, which is Quilt Club Week 2021. Now this Star Jingle quilt here is a work in progress with my scraps. I always have a quilt going so that I can take my scraps and implement them in. And so as I'm working on it, we've been filming it. Now I talked a little bit about Star Jingle. If you, uh, if you can go back to the webinars, if you've, if you've gone into the website and signed up to join the webinars, go back. There's one in April and one in May where I started talking about um, Star Jingle. Uh, but the, the complete process of it is one of the classes that will be in Quilt Club Week 2021. So you can see I still have 
have pieces, you know, that I'm working on. I need, um, um, this is one row and this is one row and I need, so this is two rows, so I need to repeat this two more times and then I'm ready to put it on and put my borders on. So I'm not sure how much I'll get done this week because we're, we're finalizing and getting everything packed up and ready to go to Houston. But I hope, my plan is to ha be ready to do the borders um, as soon as we get back from Houston. And I've got some new little scraps here to go in and play with. So um, we've been filming it. Each time I get to a new step, we film it and Steve will have it all edited and put together. This is so cool. We did Jingle Jangle, which had a nine patch in it. And then when I was doing that, I was like, oh, we can, you, you could put anything in there for that nine patch. And I love stars and I love scrappy. So I, and I needed a new scrap quilt and I thought, well, I'm just going to make my scrappy stars and put them in there. And then you can see, I think you can see here how these the stars go in that circle, but we don't have to work with any curves or anything. It's just so amazing. And there, I think, I think every quilt I sew for the next two years could be off of this same layout of the Jingle Jangle design and the different shapes and the different colors that you use. I mean, it's just kind of like a log cabin. It's endless in what you can do with this Jingle Jangle design. And it's just so, so, so simple. Um, I'll be working on another one. I did the nine patch one during Snowvid, our Texas snowstorm in February. And then uh, I started on this one. And uh, I can't wait to get started on the next one. So yeah, go into the website, sign up for Quilt Club Week. Uh, go back in and watch the webinars. Um, get, get going. Get your, stay motivated. Keep your mind going. Have something to look forward to. I mean, this is, um, this is what it's, if you love sewing and quilting, this is it. <laughs> More questions? Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay, remember the hotline, 817-713-2879. You can send me a picture of your quilt to so that I can brag on you. Or if you have a question and need help, having a complication, I can help you with that. And... Um, and when you do send something on that text line, I don't know who it is. So sometimes that's good because I don't have to know who you are uh, to help you with your quilt. But if you're asking me something specific and it's important for me to know who you are, then you need to tell me your name so I can go look up and help you with whatever. Um, but the text line is, is um, it's not for where is my order or can... Um, how do I find a certain video? I can't help you with that. Steve needs to help you with that. So if you have those kinds of questions, put those on the email, uh, either Jody at squareandasquare.com or Steve at squareandasquare.com. Okay. Any last minute questions come in? What time will Love of Country be tomorrow? Tomorrow uh, for our premium club is Love of Country. It is the, um, oh, it's one of my favorite blocks, American Beauty. And it is, is 11 o'clock I think and it is live so live. it is a live one at 11 o'clock and then the next two for love of country will be pre-recorded I already have those done they're already sitting in the little magic box waiting for you All right. okay all right, we're going to call it good for today happy I uh, hope the rest of your weekend is great and um, Une uneventful in world things, but very event eventful up in your uh, sewing room and at your cutting table. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll s hopefully we'll see you at Houston, and if not, 